What's up guys, welcome back to Tempe Creek where we talk about our winery, vineyard, and small farm operations. We're just a little guy out here trying to make it. And today guys, we have a really exciting video. You know, ever since we started this venture, a lot of people have come up to me and asked me, hey, I want to get into the wine making business or get start my own winery up, but I don't have a lot of knowledge. And what I always tell them is the same thing. If you're worried about your first vents or you're just getting up your skills, what you should do is buy juice from the store and practice on that juice. Today, I'm taking my own advice and I'm gonna go ahead and make wine from store-bought juice. So let's buckle up and let's go to the most exciting place on earth. Here we are at the best place on earth. I'll edit out the video where my adoring fans just charge me. All right guys, so here we are in the juice aisle and you can actually choose basically any juice you want as long as it doesn't contain any sorbate or potassium sorbate. We don't want any of that. That's gonna inhibit fermentation. Even though I have all these options, I know what I came for. Here we are back at the winery. And I actually chose this juice mostly out of nostalgia. I haven't had one of these in probably over a decade mostly because I'm not a child. But I'm gonna go ahead and taste it as, as you should uh, for any winemaker. Go ahead and taste your starting juice. If your starting juice isn't good, then your wine, your finished wine, it probably isn't gonna be good either. All right, here we go. Good. It's even better than I remember. If our starting juice has anything to say for our finishing product, we're gonna knock it out of the park, guys. Now I'm just drinking it because I want it. All right guys, let's go ahead and test our juice and see our starting parameter. I already looked at the acidity and it's at a 2.6, which is on the low end, but still perfectly fine. In case you're wondering, acidity should be no low, no higher than 3.4 and go as low as 2.2, somewhere around there, but although that's pretty low, um, I personally shoot for three even or 2.9. If your juice was low, you'd probably add in some juice with extra acidity, or you can go ahead and add in some tartic acid. We don't need to do anything at all. So those of you following along, don't need to do anything there. The next thing is we're gonna go ahead and measure bricks or our starting gravity. Looking at the refractometer, our starting sugar is low, 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 which is surprising. People always complain about how much sugar is in these things. We're only at a seven and a half bricks. Um, which is really low. White wines, you want to be around the 20 bricks minimum. Um, we're obviously dealing with the red here. So we're going to try to go with 13% alcohol thereabouts. We really want to be closer to 25, uh, 26 bricks. So we need to add a ton of sugar to this. But before we can add in any sugar, I guess it's time for us to press our grapes. I mean, juice. Yeah, let's go ahead and press our juice.
presentation is. The, I know the impulse is that you want to go ahead and use one of these, one of these airlocks and go, to go ahead and uh, put it on there. Do not do that. It's going to go all up your, your siphon. Right now what we we're doing is a process called open fermentation. You're going to go ahead and leave this bad boy open. Um, you want to put something on it like a piece of cloth where bugs won't get in, but air can uh, basically, uh, oxygen can get in there and so that the yeast has uh, the ability to multiply and eat all the sugar that's in there. Typically open fermentation lasts about five days or so, um, but this is a really small batch and so I'm basically gonna leave it open for two days and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, airlock on there. All right, this is a good point to stop the video. Next week's video, we're gonna basically rack the uh, wine and get it ready for uh, aging. I know guys, this was a really small batch, but if I this video gets enough traction, I will actually go ahead and make a large batch of this, maybe even 100 gallons, if we can get this video to really get promoted. And if that happens, I will have it here for you guys. If you ever come to the winery, I'll have it here. It'll be our super secret menu item. If you thought this video was useful, guys, please hit that thumbs up for me. It really helps me out. If you wanna follow along this process, Go ahead and subscribe so that you you catch the next video when it drops. Other than that, guys, congratulations. You are now winemaker.